In the universe of space and time, there are many natural multidimensional shapes. Shapes that are formed by the natural forces of energy, such as electromagnetism and gravity. Thus, these shapes have the natural ability to manipulate the energy of the ether. Many of you may have heard this concept to be especially true with objects or structures shaped like a pyramid. In 1997, there was a book published by Dan A. Davidson entitled Shape Power, a treatise on how form converts universal ether into electromagnetic and gravitational forces. Now, I have briefly discussed this concept before pointing out the possibility of great structures around the world being constructed using this shape power. Many of you may be familiar with Edward Leed Scallion's Coral Castle in Florida and how this may have been put together using not only shape power, but cymatic energy. The neighbors of Leed Scallion reported that he sang to the stones. However, there were never any eyewitnesses to testify to this. But similar ideas have come up surrounding the mysterious construction of the pyramids of Giza and the Tibetan monks using cymatics to levitate huge boulders. So let us take a closer look at the information that Dan Davidson has provided for us in his book. Let us investigate the true power of what has been kept secret from us for so long. Because we know that people with knowledge of this power seem to want to keep it to themselves. It is knowledge that has somehow managed to slip by us for most of our lives. An ancient technology that has been available to us all, but kept secret all because the powers that be do not want us to have what was built into the world that we live. And that is free energy. If you are familiar with some of my earlier work, I would often bring up frequency, vibration, cymatic concepts right down to how bees may be hovering instead of flying. How are the pyramids and other megalithic structures cut and transported? Dan Davidson wrote under the section of gravity, Putoff and his friends did a nice mathematical proof of what Keeley stated in 1896, that inertia was a result of the resistance of mass to the local etheric field. Hence, it is easy to see that movement, rotation, would cause the etheric flows of the mass to reorient with respect to the direction of movement. Sonic stimulation performs the same thing by getting all the atoms of the mass to resonate together, which synchronizes etheric flows into the nucleus. Several interesting levitation effects have been observed where sonic stimulation assisted in the levitation. Now you will better understand how something like levitation with shape power is possible when you better understand what is happening to the energy surrounding and flowing through that shape. It is the ether. The first thing to consider is that the simplest geometric shape is a single point. And the ether that flows through this single point is vortical, like a spiral, spherical in its pattern. The more complex the atomic structure is, the more complex the flow pattern of the ether will be. After a single point, you have a straight line. A straight line could simply be two atoms next to each other or where the ether can flow from one to the other or the ether of the two atoms repel each other perpendicular to the radial line, or the ether surrounds the entire line. Davidson calls this elogens of radiation. Now, if you have two atoms in a line, and then begin adding more atoms to that line, 
you lengthen the lozenge of radiation. The flow of the ether is perpendicular to the line. So if you have, let's say, two parallel lines of etheric flow, their proximity to one another is what determines how they interact, meaning they could attract or repel. Essentially, what you end up with is an etheric flow around the two lines. Here's where this gets interesting. If you take those two parallel lines and intersect them, something extraordinary happens. Davidson says that two intersecting or converging lines create an energy gradient in the ether. Think of it this way. You have two lines that intersect. As the two lines gradually get closer to one another, the more intense the interaction between the two lines will be. Remember that the energy flow is vortical, so the energy will form larger vortices as it gets closer to the intersection. So what you end up with is two intersecting lines with a vortex of energy around them. As the vortex energy increases, the closer you get to the intersection. And you also have a magnetic field that is generated as a result. So what happens when you add more lines to the intersection? In Shape Power, Davidson describes it with some interesting data. A large number of lines intersecting at a common vertex would lead, create in the vicinity of the vertex a magnetic field and an electrostatic field. Intersecting lines generate a flowing vortex of etheric energy. The magnetic field of a permanent magnet is also a flowing vortex of etheric energy as discussed previously. A set of intersecting rods will therefore generate a magnetic field because the etheric vortex flows at the intersecting of the lines are in fact a magnetic field. This means that the intersecting lines or rods should also generate magnetic fields. If you take nine wooden chopsticks, stuck them into a styrofoam ball, the individual chopstick has 40 volts per meter. Nine chopsticks into the ball generate 250 volts per meter. There's also generated a magnetic field. One inch from the ball has one Mijigos or 0 0.0 microteslas. Measurements taken with an alpha laboratory model three tri-field meter. So now that we have a very basic understanding of exactly how energy flows through shapes, let's talk a little bit about the shape people have the most questions about, the triangle, and the three-dimensional pyramid shape. Take the triangle with three connecting lines, three vertex points. The energy in this case flows from the median point out to each vertex until you cut the triangle into three parts. Now the energy wants to flow towards the center. If you surround this triangle with a circle, the circle overrides the intersecting lines and the energy is also focused toward the center. So once you have the ability to use these shapes to manipulate the flow of energy, what are the possible applications of this? Some of you may have heard of the TR-3B craft. But what you may have not heard of is that a craft like this may be using a pyramid force field propulsion system. The idea is when you have two pyramids and you line up the apex of each pyramid so that they point at each other, the energy created between the two points is what can cause levitation and propulsion. So you would have two pyramids in each of the three corners of the craft to create the anti-gravity effect. But because this formula would cause the craft to do it naturally, you have to have a control mechanism. And this would come in the form of an electric charge to control the polarity. That is just one way of doing it, according to a US patent for a triangular spacecraft. Now that you have some idea of how energy flows through these shapes, you will be able to see how simple the concept is illustrated here. A spacecraft having a triangular hull with vertical electrostatic line charges on each corner that produce a horizontal electric field parallel to the sides of the hull. This field, interacting with a plane wave emitted by the antennas on the side of the hull, generates a force per volume 
combining both lift and propulsion. So let's take a closer look at this pyramid energy. In the book Shape Power, Davidson describes the concept of pyramid energy, emphasizing the pyramid's ability to focus and concentrate etheric forces, including the applications of food preservation, which I am conducting a home experiment to demonstrate this. So I simply took eight chopsticks and pitcher hanging wire and coiled the wire around the chopsticks to create the pyramid shape. No glue was necessary, and the pyramid shape is not perfect. I took a banana and a green apple, cut them both in half, and placed one group outside the pyramid and one group inside the pyramid. After one hour, this is what happened to the fruit outside the pyramid. And this is what happened to the fruit inside the pyramid. This is the first time I've done this experiment and I have to say, I'm impressed. There is an obvious difference, right? Davidson promotes that this is an effective way to enhance meditation and healing when inside a pyramid structure. I actually live in a house that has a pyramid frame above me for the roof. So I am constantly under that framework. I am sure several of you have that same framework in your house, in your roof. I just found that to be interesting. Of course, that doesn't place me inside the pyramid frame, just beneath it. Now, he also states that to get this pyramid effect, you only need the outline and the pyramid shape. He writes, of all the above interesting effects, the most profound is the fact that all the pyramid energy effects can be generated with only the barest of outlines of the pyramid shape itself. In fact, research has shown that a certain amount of open space is necessary in the sides and bottom of the pyramid to enhance the energy effects. Maximal energy effects are achieved with only the open frame. So we have a lot more to discuss, folks. I hope you got something out of this presentation, something to take with you and investigate further. I have some important topics to get to you this week. We are going to start to zero in on the topics you guys want to know more about, so stay tuned. We are entering a new season and a new season of Woodward TV. Everyone be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. God bless everyone, and remember, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.